What's up guys? Hello and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be checking out how to turn a regular Raspberry Pi into a print server. And if those of you don't know what a print server is, basically it's a way of taking any printer and basically turning it into a network printer. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, make sure your Raspberry Pis are up to date and stay tuned because it's coming up right here, right now on M.I. Sperry. Okay guys, so as the intro stated, we're gonna be using our Raspberry Pi and building a print server. And those of you who don't know what that is, a print server is basically something that is intermediate in between your printer and a network of some sort. So if you've got an old printer that maybe cannot be networked or maybe you just have a multifunction printer or something like that, that you would like to have the ability to print from your tablet or print from, uh, any computer in your house and you have a home network where you can you can do this um, you can put a print server on it plug it in usb into the print server and then connect it to your network and you should be able to uh, print from any device now today we're going to be using my hp 1320n computer which is already a network based printer but i've noticed that printing from uh, ipads or or any kind of tablet or your phone android devices things like that it doesn't exactly uh, find this network printer. So we're going to solve that by using a Raspberry Pi in between. Now, the same setup works for just a normal USB printer, like a local printer. And I'll show you that as we get into the configuration, but you can just plug the USB into the Raspberry Pi and then do this setup. And like I said, when it gets to the point where it differs, I'll tell you which one is uh, which and how to configure it. But let's go ahead and get started. Like I said in the intro, make sure your Pi is up to date by doing a super pseudo apt update like I did up here. Once that is done, I'm just going to clear it out so we can get to the top here. Once that is done, we need to install cups, which cups, uh, oh, I can't remember what that stands for. It's, it's, uh, I don't remember the C and the U, but it's printing server or printing service is what it stands for. But it's very standard printing service. For, it comes on all flavors of Linux. It is a very, e, uh, very simple, very easy uh, printing service. So we're going to go ahead and install that. So to do that, we're going to do a sudo apt get install and cups. And so we will take and wait for this to install. Now it may take a little bit. We're going to say yes hit enter. Now this may take a while to install, so uh, I'm going to pause the video and we'll be back once it's uh, once it's done. Okay, and just like that, uh, we're done installing cups. So now what we need to do is we need to give the Pi user some admin privileges so that way uh, we can get into the cups uh, stuff without actually having to do the sudo and stuff like that and it can run correctly. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a sudo user mod. We're going to do an add to a group LP admin, and we're gonna add the Pi user to that. So once we get done with that, then all we gotta do is uh, set up our cups to allow any uh, remote users to connect to it. Because currently cups is set up uh, by default for only local uh, use. So only the local uh, basically Raspbian can use it. So we wanna set that up to where anybody connecting to it can use it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a sudo uh, cups ctl dash dash remote dash any. So that should, oh, any, help me do that. So that way everybody can get to it. Once we do that, then we need to restart cups. So to do that, you need to do a sudo etsy init.d cups and then restart and we should be good restarting the service. Okay, so the service restarted should be good. So now to test that, I'm gonna grab a web browser window. Um, if you don't know, I need the pies config. So uh, if I do an if config, uh, I know that my IP address is the 250 address. So we're gonna grab a browser. We're gonna do the HTTP colon slash slash, and we're gonna do a uh, 192.168.1.250 and then colon 631, all right? And then you should see this page, which is the CUPS uh, page. And I'm doing this from my PC, um, not from the Raspberry Pi, so that lets me know that uh, that command worked and that we should be uh, good to go in that regard. So now, for uh, the ability to have Windows actually see this device and actually be able to set it up correctly, we're gonna need to install Samba. Samba is a really cool uh, sharing service 
service essentially that uh, uses you can do shared drives with that. I think I've done some videos in the past where I've done shared network drives and things like that using the Samba service. So it's very good, and we're basically going to share this Raspberry Pi's uh, cups uh, ability. So what we're going to do is we're going to sudo apt uh, get install s a m b a Samba. And we'll let that load up. We're going to choose yes, and we'll let that install. So while that's installing, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video, and uh, we'll be back once it's installed. Okay, you know, during part of the Samba installation, you'll be asked about this DHCP server stuff. Uh, just go ahead and hit no. Um, it's just for pulling additional information from the DHCP server, which you don't need. So just, just hit no. Okay, and like that, the magic of editing, uh, we've got uh, Samba installed. So the next thing we need to do is we need to edit the Samba config. Now I'm going to use uh, VI, so I'm going to do a sudo vim. Now you don't have to use VI, you can use nano. You can just do a nano instead of VI, but I like using VI because <clears throat> I'm weird like that. So we're going to do a sudo VI of the Etsy Samba smb.config file. All right, got it. We're going to go down to the printer uh, printers uh, section. We're going to change this guest to yes. That's what we're going to change. Um, <clears throat> as well as, I'm going to make sure that there's nothing else that I need to do. Nope, not on that one. And then down here under this print dollar sign, we're going to choose uh, the read only. It says yes. We're going to change that to a no. We don't want it to be read only. We want to be able to send stuff to it, right? So we're going to save all that. Now we need to restart uh, Samba. So we're going to do a sudo systemctl for system control restart smbd. And that should restart. There we go. Our Samba. All right. So now we need to go on to, we should have everything set up on the Pi. It's now to go to the web interface and we need to set up the uh, printer. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up another window. We're going to do the HTTP. 192 and 68 dot 250 631. Oh, well, it helps if I type the right IP address. 1.250.631. Okay, so here's our cups. Okay, <clears throat> so now we just need to go through adding a printer. So to do this, you need to go to administration. And then under printers, we're going to say add printer. Now, it does say that you must upgrade your credentials. It will redirect you. You, you. you get this little not private thing just because it doesn't have a secured whatever. It's fine. Just hit advance. I'm using Google Chrome. Um, whatever browser you're using, just tell it to continue. Um, it'll remember those credentials that we put in for Pi. Should be good now. So then go ahead and hit add printer. Oh, it's going to ask us for it. So we're going to say Pi and then Raspberry or whatever, you know, that you uh, chose for your password. We're going to hit continue. And then it should go ahead and load up the page. Okay, so here we go. So it does a scan for all printers, whether it be network or local. Now, if you're plugging in, here's where I told you I would, I would show you. If you're plugging in a USB printer into it, you should see that show up here under local printers. Okay, local printers means a printer that is connected directly to the Raspberry Pi using USB or something like that effect. Okay, so that's a local printer. Now, my printer is already a network printer okay it's just the problem is it's an older printer it doesn't work really well with tablets and things like that so i'm going to go ahead and configure up this print server for it okay but if you have a usb one you use you should see it show up here in the local printers uh area mine is right here hp laserjet series 1320 so it does see it so i'm going to choose that printer okay so we'll choose that and then we'll hit continue. So it sets it up, basically gives it a name. You can change this name if you want to, if you want to say like family printer or something like that and give it a description. I'm going to leave the default. I know what it is when I see 1320. I know it's the only uh, laser printer I have in my house. Now make sure that you choose to share this printer. Make sure this is checked because otherwise no one else will be able to get to it. Hit continue and then it should move on to driver selection. Uh, so we'll give it a second. Yep, there we go. So it brings up a whole bunch of uh, printers that it knows about that it basically has drivers for. Now, if you do not, if you do not see yours here, and you actually have a driver CD, there should be a .ppd file or whatever. You can choose that file here, and then you can pick that uh, from the list. Okay. Now mine, I believe, shows up in here. So let me go down. Mine's not a color one. 
Mine is just a regular laser jet. Okay, here we go. Laser jet. And then here we go. Laser jet 1320 EN for English because that's that's where I'm at and that's the language I speak. So this one should be good enough. 531, that's the latest uh, print driver. Should be fine. So we're going to do that and then we're going to hit add printer and this will install the driver. It gives you a brief synopsis where you can change up color, model, you can change up some different print settings if you would like, but you should be ready to go. So now if you're using a Windows 10 PC, um, what we're going to do is I'm going to go to the taskbar and I'm going to go to the little gear, the settings window, and we're going to go to devices here. Now under devices, we're going to go to printers and scanners. We're going to go to add print server. It's going to scan for print servers, and there it is. Raspberry Pi, or uh, LaserJet 1320 at Raspberry Pi. So we're going to click that, and we're going to hit Add Device. Now, it may take it a little bit um, to connect and finally upload uh, the information that it needs to upload, but I promise it will start going. You get basically a status bar. Oh, there it goes. So you get a little status bar here, and it'll creep across. May give it a little bit. I may, I may end up putting a jump cut in. And just like that, it is ready to go. So now um, it shows up in my printers. So now I'll go ahead and I will exit out of this. And let me just grab a quick, let me just grab a quick notepad here. Okay, and we're gonna just do a hello world. This is a test print of the Raspberry Pi print server. Sure, why not? So now we're going to go to our file and we're going to say print. And now we should be able to see that printer in the list. And there it is, printer at Raspberry Pi. And I'm going to hit print. And theoretically, it should print out beside me over here. I hear the printer turn on. Give me just a second. All right. And there we go. Hello world. This is our test print. All right. And that's all there is to it, guys. I have now set up a Raspberry Pi as a print server using cups and using Samba. So, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. If you would like, there's some links down below in the description. I put a link to a Raspberry Pi kit that is the exact Raspberry Pi that I'm using. I'm just using a 3B Plus is what I'm using. I put a link down below for a kit and the link also for the SD card, a 32 gigabyte SD card that is a fairly speedy, fast uh, SD card that's for a decent price, all on Amazon. Yes, they're affiliate links. So that way, if you uh, would like to support the channel, you can click on those links you don't have to buy what that link is just clicking on that link and then navigating to whatever you want to buy uh, that you would normally buy on Amazon um, still helps the channel so if you want to donate to the channel you can donate by clicking on those affiliate links down below also check out the Amazon Prime um, membership down below it's a free 30-day sign up check that out if you've never been a Prime member try Amazon Prime it's freaking awesome especially in this day in this time that's going on with the whole COVID-19 thing you, know, you can't really get out of your house having the ability to click a button and get stuff in two days is awesome so go down there and check out that uh, that link down there and give yourself a trial of 30 days it's free and after 30 days, you just cancel it. It's no big deal. Also, check out the t-shirts. I'll put a card somewhere. We got t-shirts, uh, some of the engineered t-shirts that are out there that are lots of fun. Sport your engineering pride with uh, which discipline you would like to be. We've got pretty much all the different disciplines, chemical, electrical, nuclear, mechanical, all of them. So check out the t-shirts. That helps the channel out as well, as well as hit that like button. And definitely hit that subscribe button and make sure you ring the bell because, you know, otherwise you don't get notified of anything that's going on. I do polls for you guys. This is one of the videos of the polls that I do. I do lots of different communication and definitely check out Maker Monday and hit the Reddit page to make sure that you add your projects and things so you, we can talk about them on Monday. All right, guys, thank you so much. I'm out of time. Keep coding, keep building, and we will see you next time.